Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat episode 389, featuring part two of my interview with Mega Wars maestro David Beatty. In this part of the interview, we talk more about the history of the game, some of the great uh, uh, stories about the community of players around this game, some great war stories from David. Uh, we also talk more about the history, some of the design problems uh, that David has run into, and uh, even something about the, the future of the game and where David wants to see this thing go. A lot of great stuff here, so without further ado, here is Mr. David Beatty. Out of work. Uh, so you picked up, I guess, I'm, was it Mega Wars 3 then on CompuServe? That's where you entered the picture as yeah. a player? As a player. As a player. Like I said, I spent three grand one month. And I'm not going to take about the other months either, so... <laughs> Well, I think that catches us up. So it's been sort of cleansed of the Star Trek references. It's uh, on CompuServe for a while, and of course they, I guess after a while, shifted their model from that pay per hour mode to a monthly fee or flat rate fee. Yeah, that was back in about '95 or so, because America Online had been giving them such competition that they had to do something. And then, of course, Genie was at the time also, and Bill Bill Laden moved from CompuServe to Genie, and they made a different copy of Mega Wars on Genie called Stellar Emperor. So oh, that's there, where that some, comes from. So yet another branch, or <laughs> another branch Maybe. of Mega Wars. Yeah, that's exactly right. And so they ended up making their own service several years later. And but every time they moved it from service to service, everything changed. So we're actually still based off of CompuServe's uh, original game itself. So that's that's where we have taken the basics. So, everybody asked me what about the copyright and intellectual property and that kind of thing. First off, CompuServe is gone. It's dead. The you you have to copyright something that that is visual. The game doesn't look the same anymore. We're, we're graphics, as you can see, and it's not text based. And so we, I paid some attorneys to make sure we were clean. And we have the uh, uh, copyright on Mega Wars now. All that's in place. Uh, not the copyright, but the trademark also. So we're we're trying to do everything the right way. So that seemed like it turned out to be a lot easier. I would have imagined that <laughs> would have been a, a huge uh, endeavor to try to get the trademarks. Well, and well, there's no. Well, here's the thing: there's no characters that you can trademark because the players are the content. Mm -hmm. So there's there's no NPCs or or story that has ever been created for it. Um, it was just a game. In fact. Uh, um, I got a response from our email blast. The guy says, hey, it looks really good. I noticed the name and replied back, and it was Chris Taylor at wow. Gas Power Games. <laughs> good old Chris so, Taylor. Yeah, good old Chris Taylor. He had uh, actually played uh, Mega Wars back when it was still alive. So, But CompuServe shut down in 1999, and, uh, so, and then that's when I picked up the name in 2007. But uh, that's that's how all that kind of ties together is is that there were a lot of famous people that played Mega Wars and influenced things, and so I look at Mega Wars with its simplistic a couple of economic things, and then you look at uh, uh, what is a annihilation, what, a total annihilation. I think is that's the big one that Chris Taylor Chris's did. Game, yeah. Yeah. So you look at that and you look at the economics of what Mega Wars is, you go, hmm, I feel similarities here. So well, he there's was a, inspired. He was inspired by a game he played as a kid. So kind of fun stuff. Any other famous people that you've met over the years? From oh, yeah. Well, there, there's Neil Halford. Uh, mm -hmm. I met him through Chris because Chris did the Wildman campaign. I mean, you were a big oh, part yeah. of that. And uh, um, so I met Neil Halford through that, and then um, 
uh, at Neil then took me to uh, a thing out here in Southern California called Beer Wednesdays. Our Beer Wednesdays. Beer Wednesday. <laughs> and what happens is a lot of the game developers here in Southern California end up at this little bar over in Tustin and sit around and talk. So I met Chris Avalon there. Is that is that how you say his last name? Avalon? Avalon? It Chris. depends on how many beers you've had on a window. That's true, yeah. That's <laughs> how many beers you had. So I've met all kinds of people when I've gone to those. I haven't gone to that faithfully because I'm still working on Mega Wars. So I want to try to get it finished before I start, you know, going out. And we're at that point now, so it's kind of cool. I was about but, to say, you're sort of at that point, right? Or is there... Yeah, what, we are. Do you feel like there's still a lot more to do? or what, what, what's the... There's a lot of things I want to do. Um, I want to add some technologies and some, some cool things like that. But we've got to start getting some players in so we can start building up some more graphics and that kind of thing. But the game is playable right now. We're finishing up our um, video demo of the game itself. And then once that's done, we'll be able to start heavy doing some advertising and uh, getting it on Steam and everything else. So the game itself is playable. We're still in beta with it, trying to trying to get all those last little things out. I've got a little thing that's just driving me crazy when I go into <laughs> hyperspace. The stars aren't showing up. It's like, how are the stars not showing up? You know, And it's something about the data stream, and it just makes me grouchy. Yeah, because you moved all this to Unity 5. Not When did that happen? Yeah, we actually, because it was text-based for a very, very long time, and then we um, uh, went to Silverlight because there was a contest for Silverlight. This is kind of funny. There was a contest for Silverlight that uh, they had a uh, game, $10,000, win $10,000 with your game on Silverlight. $10,000, that's pretty Ten grand. That's pretty sweet. Ten grand. Yeah, it is. And uh, so uh, one of the employees at Crimson Leaf, we, we did CAD CAM software. So that's that's our background. So we were doing uh, some CAD CAM software. My wife had gone to Disneyland. We were living in North Carolina at the time. And uh, so we found this. And the employee and I said, hey, let's do this. We'll split the 10 grand together, but we'll convert Megawars to Silverlight. So we found some graphics on the internet, and we got Silverlight and Megawars to work over a period of a week. Wow. Yeah. And so That's insane. It was, yeah, it was it was we got the core working. It was really it was really kind of cool. And uh, so we got the core working and, and again, it was only 2D graphics. It wasn't anything huge. But uh, we had already been using Silverlight for development of CAD CAM products for people to build applications with. And so we bust I mean it was because my wife was gone, and he just stayed over at the house. And so we ended up working solid for a week, and we just pumped that thing out, and we came in third place with it. And I think if we'd had some sound and some things, we might have won first place. Uh -huh. But we won third place with it. Did but it was, it was kind of fun. Is, no, no, it fun. was it was 10 grand or nothing, you know. <laughs> So, but uh, some some stupid little dog game or something. One I forgot, and I pushed. I I tried to black back that you know made it black and make it disappear. So uh, we took that core and then uh, that became Warp Plus. We try, thought we'd try to rebrand it under a different name, and then uh, uh, a volunteer named Becky said, "Hey, I I want to build a game." So. We gave her that core that we built with Silverlight, and then that, she used that, and then we worked together and, and built Warp Plus and tried to get some people in, and it, it, we just couldn't get past the graphics with a lot of people. It just was, well, I'm just not getting it. And it, they didn't it was like the graphics, the, or they didn't like the idea of the graphics? They just didn't like, well, that's part of it. Some of some of the players didn't like that it had graphics. And it goes back to what I said earlier. It's not what I see in my mind. Okay. That doesn't look like a Klingon. <laughs> that's right. That's that's what we, well, it wasn't Klingon. Can't say Klingon. It was it was something else. But that's not how I see it. And so we ended up fighting that for a little bit. And then Becky um, got... Uh, this isn't uh, Becky Burger, by the way. 
No, this isn't Becky Berger. This is this is Becky Walker. Um, she's a very nicely, very smart. Oh gosh, she's really sharp. She picked up Silverlight in probably two weeks and learned C sharp and everything else, and uh, got got into it deep and everything else. And uh, she ended up taking that and starting a. Um, uh, uh, DNA analysis software. Like I said, she's really smart for doing uh, ancestry and stuff. So she goes, wow. yeah, and and she's retired. So she just you know kind of jumped project to project. And so she she got as far as she got with Mega Wars and decided that she that's all she wanted to do. And I mean, that, I'd love to be retired. I'd do the same kind of thing. You know, oh, I've done this as long as I want, and I've accomplished my goals and. See you later. You know, it's kind of like, okay, cool. You know, but uh, she's she's one of our, our core players and has been that for years. And uh, but uh, she's got some cool DNA analysis software if you ever want to do something like that. <laughs> I probably don't want to know. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. sure I'm it, better off blissfully ignorant. Yeah, your great grandpa was, but uh, she's, <laughs> she did that. And so, um, from that, we she turned around and converted that into Mega Wars Four, which is still running today. We have that up and running, but it's Silverlight, and uh, we use some of the Warp Plus code to start Mega Wars. And so we went to try it on a Mac, and we had it. We were ready to go. Everything was done. We go try it on a Macintosh, and none of the special effects worked. It was like. Oh. And they had just come out with a patch for the Macintosh to to start shutting down Silverlight because Silverlight died in 2014 or something was their last version. And so out of that death, it killed what we were trying to do. Well, that must have been horrible. It was because I had all this work into it. And uh, Unity was all in C sharp, the same as all of of Silverlight was, and so C sharp is pretty portable. So I thought, well, they just came out with this new version of Unity five, and this was like three days after, three days before we found out the Mac didn't work, and so I go, well, let's just give it a try, and so I moved some of the code over to um, Unity. And it worked. It was like, this is kind of cool. So we took this little 2D <laughs> game. It works as advertised. Whoa. It worked. It worked, dude. All the <laughs> data. Well, it was amazing. The the key to the to Mega Wars it wasn't was data like that with No, no, no. We had put a lot of work into it because we got the data streams right and everything else. And so that was the most important part. I was able to log into the game and get the maps. And that's one of the reasons why I'm so perplexed right now is why is stars not showing up right now i mean that's been since day one but the uh, the funny thing about it is is silverlight not silverlight but unity had just come out the code moved over perfectly we uh had um probably the 2d game working within the first month full data communication all that was in and then uh uh Neil was part of the, the team at that point. He goes, okay, now we need to do this. We need to do that. And started designing some more in. Jeffrey Rimmer joined the team and built some cool 3D ships for us. It's kind of, well, we got 3D ships. Might as well start doing some 3D graphics <laughs> with it. And then that led I to like the, the next way he thing. Thinks. That's yeah, and so uh, so we've got – so then we and, – and if you look on our YouTube page – there's like 50 videos there, and they range back to 2015. And you can see the development of the game. I don't know if you had a chance to look through oh, those, yeah. but you, you start going, "Oh, geez, this looks terrible!" Right at the top, you know, I gotta, you know, right the very first one. It's just these hokey-looking graphics. I mean, you look back at that and go, "Oh my gosh, I want to delete it." But on the other hand, that's our history. I kind of want to leave it. You know, this is where this is our well, roots. I think it's this is something to be from. proud of. Uh... That's why so, people ask sometimes, why do you have those old Mad Chats up from like <laughs> one and two? Oh, that are I love horrible, those. But, uh, oh, God, some of your best ones. I I still think <laughs> were some of your first ones. They were really, really good. I Actually, when I first met you, 
um, I, I actually Neil introduced us. I don't remember that, but Neil introduced us, and uh, um, so I started started watching all years. And and during my Mega Wars development, I actually went to the beginning of Matt Chat and watched those all the way through. And there's 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 little tidbits that I've taken out over the years of of these interviews you've had with these game designers. I'd go, oh, wow, that guy experienced what I've experienced, and so. I've found them inspirational. Many of them have been inspirational to me watching them. So, you know, and and watching Chris Taylor's, you know, I thought, you know, if if I'm in that kind of situation, you know, how difficult would that be? I mean, I have a lot of respect for Chris, you know, and how he was able to pull off a deal to help save his people because his people was the thing that was most important to him. It wasn't the money. It was the people. And uh, I mean, that that interview you did with him, I mean, it was it's heart wrenching to me, but I think it's fantastic. I mean, it shows his heart. So, but no, I've been watching your stuff for a long time. In fact, we, you know, <laughs> well, I was, was going to say you should keep too. your old, your old uh, YouTube's up for that same reason. Yeah, I, I, and I probably will. I probably will because I, I've looked at a couple of them ago. You know, you, you can see the steps all the way through the years. You know, hey, our first three D ship. You know, and uh, it's kind of hokey, but it's a three D ship. And then and someone right, come along so, and say, actually, that one looks much better than the new ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I had someone say that about the logos. I hope Jeff's not listening. Actually, I think he saw it too. I mean, I, our our logo. Some people we just don't like change. I, I I'm firmly convinced. Yeah, that's it. They too. get used to something, and it doesn't matter how much better it is. To in their eyes, it's, it's different. They don't like. It. Yeah, exactly. We had a, a Mega Wars three logo, and somebody looked at that and goes, "I like that much better than the new one." So it's like, I've already <laughs> copyrighted, I've already trademarked the new one. No, it, we're keeping the new one. So, <laughs> such fun, but uh, we're chased a lot of rabbits today. I hope that's been fun for you. Yeah, I wanted to go but, back uh, and talk a little bit about the uh, something I think is really special about the game Mega Wars. And I was thinking about this, too, because, uh, you know, we're not 16, 17-year-olds anymore. We don't have the 10, 12 hours a day to sit in front of a game and the, the commitment. You think about a game like World of Warcraft and oh, yeah. you know, how many thousands of hours it takes to, to get to a point where you're not just getting annihilated by the, <laughs> you know, the lifers. Yeah. Uh, I love this idea of just, what is it, four weeks or 30 days it's it's a four you week know, it's long not a lifetime, competition. It's not a lifestyle change here. It's not a lifetime commitment. Yeah, um, and that is the, that is one of the, the the cool things about Mega Wars is it is a, um, a four week war. It starts out on a Friday night, goes for four weeks, and it ends the Thursday night before the next Friday night. So it gives you twenty four hours to rest. Okay. And uh, it's it's basically I think it's six hundred and seventy something hours of play, and it, when you're on a team and you're in an intense war, you'll get a call in the middle of the night. Hey, dude, they're taking our planet. Let's go. You know, <laughs> and so you get up, you go over your keyboard, and this is where we found. Okay, now you're going to laugh at this. Retirees are the most important thing to have on the team. Okay, now some retirees. They always get up early, okay? So they get up at like five o'clock, you know, because once you get to a certain age, you just well, can't sleep. They're sleeping sleep in until five o'clock. What are you talking That's about? That's right, exactly. So then they get up, and then they have all day to play. Where everybody else is at work, they have all day to play, <laughs> and then and then they don't care, you know. They'll get up in the middle of the night to have to go to the restroom. And they'll come in, log into Mega Wars, and destroy somebody and go back to bed you know so retirees is the most important thing to have on your team it's just kind of funny just the way that worked out but uh yeah it's four weeks long and it's just like playing monopoly and that kind of thing there's an end game and once you hit the end game then we declare winners and losers and then we start again and and the other key to it is you begin to learn the game so if you start out a war and you make mistakes, oh well, wait to next to the end of the month. Well, our goal with, with the current version is a new war will start every Friday night. So we'll have four cycling through all the time. So if you got a bad start, 
you didn't end up with some real good planets because planets are random. You don't know when you first go out. Somebody else may get it. Somebody else may get the good ones, and somebody sees yours and steals yours because you didn't get on a good team. And uh, well, wait the next Friday night. You jump got in stuck with war. Spectrum. Oh, me on Spectrum. He pissed off the whole universe, and everybody's out to kill us. <laughs> That's exactly. That's a great that way, way to do. And uh, you'd mentioned also somewhere I don't remember where this I read this, but you're talking about how the it's a lot more, I guess, newbie friendly in a way because you don't have to just compete directly with people that have been playing. You know, again, to come back to World of Warcraft, it's not like there's all these level 110 people all all over the place. Yes. I mean, if you're there on Friday night, it's kind of a clean slate for everybody, which I think that's Everybody's. got a lot of appeal. Everybody starts the same on reset night, okay? And I've had people go, well, what about progression? I, you know, I, I found this in the last war, and I want to use it in this one. I say, well, the problem is, if I do that, then you're more powerful than someone else. And the most important thing is fairness. And the only way to be fair is everyone starts out with the same thing except your skills. That's what makes the difference. Mm -hmm. How you know how to play the game, the friends that you have made, and more importantly, the enemies you have made. <laughs> okay? Because if you go into war and people are already pissed at you, <laughs> you've got a problem. Oh, they're coming for you this time. Oh yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, there's a there's a, a famous player called Exodor, and uh, he is probably one of the best combat players of of our time. Okay, and the guy is good. All right, don't and, tell me you pissed him off. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, I'm just telling you what he's like. Okay, and so he would fly into space and he would declare every now and then, "If I see you, I will kill you." So. If I kill you, go somewhere else because sounds like my wife. Yeah, exactly. And so he's out scouting, and if he sees you, he's just gonna fly over and kill you. It's just kind of funny. And so go go somewhere else. Go start. Go go to the other side of the universe and scout. Don't be near me because if I find oh. a planet, it's mine. And uh, like he's a very been nice guy. Yeah. Although he's a real good friend, if you're a friend of his. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll kill his friends sometimes too but um he he's probably one of the best players we ever had i mean he's he did he's contributed greatly to the game he and i helped do the balance and everybody has one ship you don't have you know if if and and everybody says well i want to control a fleet no you can't control a fleet you only control one ship at a time if if there if there is a second ship AI will control that ship, no matter what it does. And you can only control one ship at a time. So that is why we've taken the stance of you only get one ship. It's huge, okay? Once you get to a dreadnought, it will carry almost 4,000 fighters for you to attack a planet with. Okay, so imagine 4,000. I mean, our biggest aircraft carriers carry, what, 75 planes at a time? The Nimitz, I think it's somewhere around that. I mean, it's it's not huge. So imagine the size of a ship would have to be to carry 4,000 uh, fighters that are big enough to carry 10 people. Okay, so it's about the size of Black Ops. I'm thinking like Death Star size. Uh. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so that uh, that gives you an idea of the size of the ships that, that you fly in Mega Wars at the end of the war. Okay. Um, at the beginning of the war, you get a you get a ship about the size. Uh, you ever been to Disney World? The oh. Epcot Ball. Okay, that's the starting size. Of the Epcot. There's three of those. That is the same square footage as our smallest ship. Okay, so um, if you were to, to to tack three of those balls together, that would be about the size of our scout ship. Okay, because you would be able to fit about twelve. Black Hawk helicopters, which is about the size that I have uh, approximated the, the size of the fighters, and you would use that to go out and attack planets with. So, And then that grows all the way up to 200 times that size. <laughs> I mean, it seems pretty massive to me, but I guess it's all relative, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's all relative. So, 
the the reset is the key and and the players are the content so we those two together give us a an advantage over what a lot of games are like and that's the other thing world of warcraft if you invite a friend to come join you you're going to have to level him up yes to be able to play with you if on the last day of the war uh i called you up and i said hey matt I need you, and you've you've got some experience playing Mega Wars in the past, and you're a good combat pilot. I could call you up and say, "Hey, Matt, we've got a big battle I know coming." It's two up. in the morning, but uh... <laughs> I know it's two in the morning, but yeah. I would give you the money to buy the massive ship. You would buy the massive ship from one of my shipyards, and then we could go attack together. So within 30 minutes, if you had previous Mega War skills, then you could join me on the last day of the war and take a planet. In theory, if you got the right planet, you could enter the last day of the war and become president. Does that ever happen? No, but it could. <laughs> See, there's a difference what could happen and what really happens. But uh, we had we had a team change change over at the end of the war one time. You want to hear an old war story? You can edit <laughs> sure. this out if you want to. Here's an old war story. We had a a, a guy, his famous, his name is Telcar, all right? He's one of my friends on Facebook, and if he watches this, tell, this is about you, buddy. Um, and Poncho. And so uh, Telk was the leader of one team. Poncho was the other leader of another team. And then there were two guys, I forget who they were, but Tel came to them and said, you're going to join my team or I'm going to wipe you out. And they said, okay, fine. We'll join your team. So they were on his team all the way through to um, – now remember, war starts on a Friday night and goes to a Thursday night, okay, four weeks later. Okay, So at about noon on Thursday, these two guys defect and go to Poncho's team. Okay, so they left Helk's team because he had threatened, join my yeah, team or I'm going to wipe exactly you out. It didn't exactly inspire much loyalty with that little maneuver. No, it didn't. And so they went and joined Poncho's team, and Poncho won that war, and Telk, there wasn't a lot he could do at that point, okay? So you can you can be heavy-handed, uh, and he learned from that. He told me later, he goes, I've never trusted anybody again. I'm just going to wipe them all out. <laughs> yeah, I love that kind of thing because it really shows, it really shows, uh, in my opinion, why you don't necessarily need all this pre prefabricated story and this deep lore and uh, all this stuff because, the, like you say, the players themselves will come up with a lot better stories uh, just by playing the game. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, the, the who players come up are with the that? content. Yeah, the players are the content. Does that make any sense? <laughs> Am, is that starting to come through it's now? It's starting, uh, starting to come together. <laughs> and that's all for this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I should be back next week with some gameplay footage. I was actually able to get a, a what was it, Twitch a stream going, so I was able to play... Uh, Mega Wars with David, and we have uh, both our feeds there. He's talking about the game. We're uh, having a great time. I thought I would share that with you. I think it'll be a pretty fun episode. A little something different than the normal Matt Chat, so stay tuned. As always, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much for your support of the show. Uh, this show is 100% dependent on people just like you uh, who are willing to step forward and toss in a buck an episode to keep these uh, to keep the show in production, to keep these episodes and interviews coming. Uh, if you haven't done so already, guys, uh, please head over to that link in the show notes to the Patreon site. Uh, you can sign up to be a Ratreon and support the show. All I ask is a buck a show, and I really, really appreciate it. Uh, so thank you uh, very much for your support. All right, what about that news from the Matt Cave? I got some pretty cool news for you this week. Uh, 
Uh, this first bit is from Darren Venaria. Uh, Darren wrote in about his game Elite Flatland. As you probably know, I'm a huge fan of the original Elite, uh, as well as Elite Dangerous. I'll play that uh, off and on. Uh, but uh, Darren has done something quite uh, unique here. He's got a 2D version of the game, uh, thus the Flatland. So he describes it as the classic 1984 space game reimagined using one less dimension and one additional objective. <laughs> Join Gal Cop to help stop the Thargoids. Uh, the full game available as a single executable for Windows. Also available is the Python source code with all the assets for anyone interested in the programming. Uh, both Python uh, 3.5.1 and Pygame 1.9.3 are needed to run the source code version. Uh, but anyway, I think this is extremely cool, uh, so definitely go check that, uh, check that out. Elite Flatland. Uh, second bit is uh, from Game Banshee. Uh, they're talking about this game, Jagged Alliance, the board game. <laughs> So this is a cooperative, tactical, one-to-four player board game based on, of course, the Jagged Alliance series. It's rich and variable cooperative tactical combat game with true to the, true to the game's digital predecessor with 999 plus minutes of replayable campaign and extra scenarios. Take on the role of your favorite mercenary, fight the armies of the evil dictator to free the nation of Aralco from oppression, always keeping you and your team on the edge of victory. Uh, this is a Kickstarter project. They're going for 58k. Uh, they're, I think they just hit 30k as of uh, this recording, uh, with 25 days left to go on that. Uh, anyway, this is, uh, I think this is really, really cool. A lot of you guys are always uh, on me to cover Jagged Alliance. Uh, maybe I'll do that for my next uh, review episode, take a look at Jagged Alliance. But uh, anyway, definitely go check out this Kickstarter. It's 25 days left to go. And I foolishly did not write down here how much you need to pledge in order to get the, get the board game, but it's probably not too bad. I think it'd be a great collectible, if nothing else. And then finally, this is a video, and this is just so quirky. Uh, I don't know what else to say about it, really. Uh, but this guy has uh, gone through all these different games and taken a look at, and taking a, to take a look at the bathrooms, okay? <laughs> and all, the, all these Hitman games and many other games. Uh, I don't really know what, what to say about it. It's just something about it makes you kind of want to watch the whole thing once you, once you get started with it. Now, I will say this. You'll never look at a bathroom in a video game the same way again after watching this video. So anyway, go check that out and uh, let me know what you think. All right, so let's wrap it up with the quotation then. And I, th I was looking up for quotes about space, and I was looking at some... Uh, Captain Kirk quotes, but I found one from Captain Picard, and I really liked it, uh, so I think I will go with that one uh, for this week. Go something like this. It's about time. Time is a companion that goes with us on a journey. It reminds us to cherish each moment because it will never come again. What we leave behind is not as important as how we have lived. That's pretty deep, huh? Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that and see you next week.
Get off my bridge. <laughs>